YouTube, Bird Billy here. Hey, today we're going to cover um, how to wire in an outlet. Um, this is an ongoing series on wiring an outlet, a light. Um, so, I'm actually in this video, I think I'm going to try and cover the outlet and doing the switch. It's pretty quick here. So, the first thing we're going to start with is the outlet. I've got two outlets here. Um, I like the white ones. You can get any color you want. They got almond and beige. What I really wanted to point out is if you look at them, you see one of them has a little line off to the side right there, a little slot. What that's doing is that's telling you this is a 20 amp outlet. This one right here is rated for 15 amps. Most houses, you will see this. Even houses done, uh, you know, brand new houses put in, they're just going to run these in there. These will handle the 20 amp circuit, but technically a 20 amp circuit should be designated with an outlet outlet like this. So if you see an outlet like this, that's what you're seeing. That's why the slot is there, just for uh, so you don't get confused when you're wiring up an outlet. For this one here, we're just running a 14 gauge wire. We're going to put in a 15 amp um, outlet here. So I've got a couple things going on here. I've got a metal box, so we need to make sure we ground it. So we're going to put a ground screw in there. Um, I've got, we'll start right there with that, safety first. So we'll throw the ground screw in. Now our, when we do grounding, with something like this, if we're going to do a wiring like this, I always want the ground to come off my feed end if I can help it. So we're going to take that ground screw, we're going to tie this feed cable around there, and we're going to tighten it up. I have now bonded that box to the ground. I'm going to take this ground here, I'm going to bring it down here. This is my ground, and when I do my wiring, and this is, I'm kind of getting out of the um, context here, but since we're doing the project, I'm going to show you guys what I do. Um, you can see I mark them, and I do that if you're doing any kind of home wiring yourself. Because if you do an outlet, you may be running an, out, running an outlet out in your garage or something. Always mark on the wire what's going on with it. You're, you know what? It's one of those uh, little tips or tricks that you, you'll thank yourself for doing it down the road because it comes in handy a lot. So what we're going to do here, we're going to bond these ones together. We're going to need a little bit of a ground wire to tell off to the... Um, I'm just going to cut a piece off of here. We're going to need a little bit of the ground wire to tell off to our outlet, so I'm going to cut that right now. So if you came into an outlet box and everything was wired up, we want to make sure that our outlet has a ground to it. I'm going to take these guys here, and I'll slack on that. I'll we'll just use yellow wire nut. Three of them together. And we now have a ground sitting here. This ground will be used for our outlet. Now we're going to use um, our, our feed coming in. And what I want to do is I want to feed out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this outlet to make the connection to, to feed out with because if you look at the outlet, there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could make the splice inside the box. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the back of this outlet to show you. You see how there's these bars on here? What those bars are doing is they're joining these two screws together. So in some cases you could have an outlet where there is one circuit on the top and another circuit on the bottom. You might do that if say you had a heavy load. Say you had um, a, a washing machine plugged into one and a refrigerator into the other and together when they ran together for some reason it was tripping the circuit which is 15 amps couldn't handle. Well you could run two 15 amp circuits down you just have to break those tabs off and you could have two different circuits sitting here. That's why it's always 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 important to check what you're working on and make sure it's dead. Make sure that there's no power to it before you start sticking your fingers in it because you could look at something and assume oh hey I plugged something in the top and I shut the switch off and it's dead and what you don't know is there's 110 sitting down on the bottom and when you go sticking your fingers in there it's going to zing you. So just a little safety tip. <clears throat> so again when we're wiring up an outlet the bare wire goes to our green for our ground. The uh, silver color tab is going to get the neutral or common wire and the gold um, screw is going to get our power uh, or our black wire going to it. So we're going to take when we got our feed coming in so we're going to take this, actually you know what, I'm going to keep this, now that I showed you that way, we're going to do a splice. I'll splice it, tuck it all in, we'll make this look neat. So we're going to grab that little bit of wire I did right here. We'll just use these 
make a splice out of everything and tuck it in. So this way you see both ways of doing it. So the one way you could wire it off the back of those and use the outlet as a splice and then this way you can just make a splice show you how this works. You guys, if, I, if I'm getting off track here because I'm kind of trying to make this into a was a simple project but you know for me what might be simple for somebody watching this they might go hey I got lost there shoot me a comment I'll explain it to you I, I have no problem explaining something to you um, showing you how I do it so we're going to take the blacks we're going to tie all three of the blacks together now I like to if I can tie stuff myself and you can see I kind of made a neat little braid right there and then I'll snip the tip off just an extra step. Rather than counting on the wire enough to do everything, I'll usually do that. And then the wire enough goes on, and that makes the connection. And I'm going to put some tape on that as well. Now we're going to tie off our whites together here. These are our commons, or neutral wires. Cut that one off. Throw another red one up there. Okay, so I got my wires tied off. I'm ready to wire my outlet now. And I'm going a little bit long with some of this stuff, but with the wires, you could probably go a little bit shorter. Okay. There's also two ways to wire an outlet, and again, I'm coming in close because I'm the only one shooting this, so I just kind of want to show you guys. See all those holes in the back? You can, there's a line, there's a strip gauge here on the back, so you can take your wire, and you can set your wire against that strip gauge, and if you strip that back that much, you can stick in the back and just wire in the back and do a, a rear wire. You can also come off the side. So uh, this one, you would stick it in the back, you would tighten the screws, it clamps down on the wire. The side one is how I did the light and how I've showed you on the other ones where when I did the uh, plugs where you make the U. So for this one, I'm gonna do it on the side. I'm gonna go old school and just do it on the side so you guys can see it that way. But there's two ways that you can do that. And we're gonna leave everything jumpered together. We're not gonna cut those strips out. So we're gonna take the black, make a little U in it. I'm attaching the black to the gold side, and the silver side is going to get the white or the neutral. And again, we're if you look at my box, we got a little bit extra wire here, but that's life in the big city. Alright, now these other ones, I've seen guys leave them loose. I tighten everything up. There's no reason to leave that, those loose. They're just going to cause a problem. And the reason why I say that is like in a situation like this, when you have a metal box, if you're, I, and I'm going to show you another step I do where I always take these off for safety. You leave stuff loose, it's sticking out, and something's tight. Some of these boxes get tight. There's a lot of stuff crammed in there. There could be a ground wire sticking out, and you've got that, and it's sticking out loose. It could throw a short. And even if it wasn't something that caused a, you know, that big of a safety problem, it's still something that you know you just don't want to deal with. It get, you know, it's going to trip the circuit, make you look like an idiot if you're out wiring somebody's house, or if it's your house, you're going to wonder what was wrong. So I'm just throwing some um, tape around my connections here. I always tape around the bottom and then come up onto the onto the uh, wire nut. That way, I know that wire's not going to go anywhere. We're going to tuck these guys in here. Tuck the black in. Now I'm going to take this ground and we're going to throw the ground on. Put you on it. 
The ground is something you gotta have. Don't don't ever try and skip this step. I've seen people, you know, I, I subscribe to some electrical blogs and some other stuff, just trying to keep myself current and updated. And um, it's amazing what you, <laughs> you'll hear people talk about, and they'll say, "Oh, I saw this somewhere, and I thought this looked great, or it's been working that way for, you know, 30 years." Um, you always want to have a ground. So you see what I did there? How I taped that around like that? Now, down the road, if someone's working on this, they go to pull it out of the wall, or you go to pull it out of the wall, you don't have to worry about this bumping side to side and touching something metal and sparking in your face when you're pulling it out, if for some reason it was live when you were unscrewing it. So we're going to tuck this in, and again, I'm trying to do the thing where I just kind of work the wires around. Now, this one's got a different lid on it. These lids, if you forget to put them on, you just slide it like this, come around. Actually, I want the lid to go this one backwards. And it, yes. There's a slot like there. I always want that slot to come where it's resting down. I set this box back on the joist a little bit. And it's a little bit late at night here, guys, if I'm uh, getting lost here. It's the end of my day, and I wanted to get a video out to you, and I came up with this concept. So uh, I've been going all day, and right now it's about midnight, but I want to get this one wrapped up because i got a bunch of ideas I want to cover. Okay, so we got this box in place. And uh, if any of you are wondering the reason why I'm wearing tie-dye, <laughs> I'm not supporting the marijuana movement. I really care less. I'm, uh, my uh, my fiancé was doing uh, tie-dye with the kids, and she made me the shirt. So, you know, um, <laughs> apparently I have to wear it. So, I, uh, I'm wearing it today. Today we are rocking the tie-dye. Yeah, I want to get, I'm actually, uh, that outlet was missing a screw on it. Let me see if I, I got a box screw here we'll use. Let's see if this will work. No, that's too big. Not even thinking straight. All right, we'll, uh, we'll just steal one off this outlet. Rob Peter to pay Paul. Now, I, I put them in this way. Um, got a little carried away with my tape there. I put them in this way I um, where the ground's down. I've actually seen it where, you know, they'll be installed the other way. Most people are used to this way, so that's the way we install them. Um, in theory, though, they actually put the ground the other way, and the concept behind it was if something was ever dropped on it and the plug was out, it would hit the ground and fall off instead of falling across these two like it could here, like if, say it was a piece of metal fell down and fell across a plug that had fallen out, you could get a short. So for safety they had recommend putting them in the other way, but nobody does it that way. So I, I just installed this way as well. And then we would add a face plate to this. I'm gonna, this is done as far as I'm concerned. So now we have our, our splice taking place here. We tapped off our splice and we wired in our outlet. Our light has already been wired in, so now we have uh, our power coming over here, and it comes over here, and I mark power, and that goes to our switch. So, power, we're only going to break the black wire on the switch. The switch just breaks one line, so we're going to separate those two. Everybody else is getting tied together. Since this is a plastic box, there's no ground screw in it, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're just going to take these guys, snip those in a nice length, take these guys, snip those in a nice length, strip these ones back, Strip this one back. 14s time together. So now what we've just done is we've taken our common, our whites from here, brought them through here, and tied them into this circuit running over to the light. So now we have a common running when we plug it in that will run all the way from the um, plug over there to the um, light over here running through this entire circuit that we just created. 
I don't usually worry about taping the ground wires. There ain't much that can go on there. As long as you know you did a good connection on it. I'm just going to kind of tuck that in there. This one here, though, I will tape it. And it's... Most people don't, like if you're wiring a hull house, you're not going to have time to do that. For me, it's it's just something I do. It's a safety thing. I, that way I know that wire nut is not coming apart. I used to work in communications, and uh, I was trained, I was working on nurse call systems, and with that, you don't want to ever have anything come apart. And they were having us use crimp tools, that, crimping stuff. They did not want us to use wire nuts. I was working with a company, it was uh, Duquesne, they're out of Canada. Um, the guy that was training us is out of Canada, and he was he was complaining about um, Americans and the way we do stuff with our wire nuts. And when I showed him how I did my wire nuts, he kind of stopped us complaining about it because basically their thought is we just take a wire nut, grab two wires, throw it on, and shove it in the box, and that's why stuff comes loose. So the one way to make sure stuff doesn't come loose: twist your wires ahead of time, like I do, cut that tip off, put your wire nut on, throw a little tape on it. That connection will still be there in 50 years. As long as no one's messing with it, it's never coming apart. So, now this right here, myself, beside myself, we're going to grab my switch. So we got a switch. On this switch right here, this is a single pull switch, meaning all we're doing is just breaking one line in. Um, so we have a ground. Great. <laughs> I told you it's late. I I'll wire. We're going to wire a ground on this. I want you guys to see how it's done right. So here I, I got myself ahead of myself. So we're going to ground this switch which we need to do, and then we're just going to wire one black wire here, one black wire there. And so when it opens and closes, it'll break that circuit. So real quick here, I'm a ding dong, we're going to pull this out. We'll add a little tailpiece to it. There we go. Throw a U on it. Switch is wired for ground. And what do I do? So now we've grounded our switch, which we needed to do. And then we're going to throw two U shapes on here. And again, we're going to go with that clockwise that I keep talking about in all these videos. You're screwing in this way, you hook your U that way. You hook it the other way, and it can cause you a problem down the road. So turn it a little bit. Tie that one on. You can actually get away once you're set in there with just tightening these up. I always make sure I do that added step of um, closing that U. And again, I'm real big on, I don't want people calling me back saying, hey, you made a mistake here. And I've been doing it this way my whole life. And knock on wood, Never really had a problem with anything I've done with electrical. I've never had somebody call back and say, hey, that's all wired wrong or something came loose. Pop that in there. Kind of roll these around. This one was also, these were off my truck, off, off of a job. They were, I don't know why they're all missing their screws. Okay, so we have now wired in an outlet, a light, and a switch. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to screw the um, bulb in here. We're going to plug this bad boy in, and I'm going to show you guys how we test them. Oh, so we're going to screw the bulb in, hoping that's a working bulb. We're going to take our plug that we wired in the earlier video. We're going to plug that into the outlet over here. Now, we have now energized everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug our safety, we're going to plug our tester in for safety. And this is showing. You know what? The guy who wired, let me go check what he did here. I didn't check the in-ground wiring here. Let's see something here. Wow. The guys that built this garage that I'm in, and this is why you do this. What's happened in this house, and I was checking this, is they've swapped their polarity. 
because what I did is I we've wired everything right. I just went back and checked where I had my um where my, where I had my stuff plugged into, and it's showing this right here. And that's what these. I'm gonna turn this light. I've got I've added a light here. Turn this off so you guys can see this. I think you can see that. See, you got a red and an orange. You do you put these in because each thing will tell you like a, like an orange up the center will tell you that it has an open ground. So a red and an orange, if I look on here, means that the hot and neutral are reversed. So what that's telling me is that they got their polarities wrong somewhere in this house when they wired this. I'm not going to go back and fix that. Our stuff is right, but it just means that our polarity is bad coming off of this. Um, and this is why I wanted to cover these testers, and this is exactly why I do that. If an inspector came out here and was inspecting this, he threw his uh, his tester in here, and they have all different kinds you can buy. I, this is two types that I carry, um, and again, this thing is showing up with the two oranges, hot, neutral, reverse. So we're going to go ahead, flip our switch on, and our light comes on. All that that means, um, so we've done everything on, on this end right. Again, it's just the power that was fed to this, this garage. Um, is apparently bad, and I didn't even I didn't even think to check that when I started doing this project. So, um, anyways, guys, here we go. Here we have it. We've got our light that we wanted to put in. We've got our box with our outlet in it, and we've got our switch in. Every everything that's metal has been grounded. Everything is tied back. Um, the key to anything though is a good foundation, and as you can see, I mean everything was done right here, but what we were feeding in was bad, so that makes everything bad. And it's something that, you know, I've learned, and that's a troubleshooting thing. You know, and, and I don't know if you just saw what I did there. I, my work showed up bad, so the first thing I did was go right to the source of where my work stopped to see what was feeding me. And that's the number one thing when you're doing electrical. Do stuff in those steps. If something isn't working right, try and cut that circuit in half or go back to the beginning and check at the beginning. Try and find, a, like, the first point on that circuit or, you know, as you get more experience, if you have an electrician, they check the panel to make sure everything's right at the panel, and you work your way out from there. And that's how you troubleshoot stuff. So, anyways, uh, hopefully this helps you guys, and hopefully uh, everybody learned something off of this, and it wasn't too long-winded or confusing. Um, you know, the one thing I struggle with with these videos is trying to keep the content interesting at the same time, uh, covering the detail without, like, overloading you guys. Because sometimes there's, i got so much stuff going on up here, and I'm all these codes or something that I know and, and I start going off on a path I don't really want to so I try and fight that and keep them as brief as I can but if you're watching it and you feel I missed something or something wasn't explained right like I said earlier just post me a comment or shoot me a message let me know hey you know I, I didn't understand that or I had a question about this or you seem like you missed that step right there or something didn't make sense and I'll clear it up because if I made a mistake somewhere or anything like that I mean I obviously you know you find something point it out to me and you know we'll, we'll get that corrected but uh I'm pretty confident there was no mistake here because lights are on. <laughs> All right, guys. So, like I said, hope this helps. Guys, I have a great day, and thanks for watching.